Welcome back to another week of Stocks in Review for the upcoming week. In this special six-part edition, we take a look at some of the most unbelievable things that have happened with a variety of stocks, investors, and the market itself. Things you probably wouldn't believe if you didn't see it with your own eyes. Let's take a quick look at some of the major news stories that can affect your investments. The Republican tax overhaul has officially become law. This should set us up for a great 2018. Now let's see how much repatriating of income and profits takes place by America's great corporations. Crashing, turmoil, and freefall are not words we usually associate with Bitcoin or the top five cryptocurrencies. But those are words you'll see if you check in chat rooms from all over the internet late this week. Friday morning, Bitcoin dropped to its lowest levels ever seen. Are you ready? Since December 2nd. That's barely 21 days ago, folks. What's wrong with everyone? As of Saturday morning, it was already up to $16,250 a coin. While I'm not a fan of Bitcoin futures or any government involvement, I do believe it's made a big difference in pushing up the remaining top coins without futures involvement. For example, Ethereum and Litecoin, which recently hit highs of $859.46 and $374 respectively just last Tuesday. The sky isn't falling, but don't forget, bad news gets more attention than good news in the mainstream media. Hopefully you use this opportunity to average down because Santa might just bring you a $20,000 gift in a few days. Stay tuned. A number of stocks related to the technology have also taken off, especially those that are enhancing blockchain science and integration. I encourage you to watch these in the upcoming months as I've seen some parabolic increases in value here. Take a look at some of these. Hopefully you had a chance to look at some of my recommendations from last time. Six out of 10 of the stocks that I suggested looking at went up. Take a look and see how much they peaked over the last two weeks. On watch for the next two weeks, I have 10X Biotherapeutics, 22nd Century Group, Northern Dynasty Minerals, Constellation Brands, and Apricus Biosciences. At 10X, the charts are looking up again. We're seeing higher highs and higher lows again, and word about some excellent study results based on collaborative efforts for a drug known as ABL-101. This helps people who've suffered from a stroke. Watch this in the weeks to come. I like a number of the monthly charts on the 22nd Century Group stock. It's been quite a while since they've released any substantive news, but earlier this month, share volume nearly doubled above its three month average. And if you can get in under 242 or 249 a share, you should be fine. At Northern Dynasty, everything that I said would happen regarding Ron keeping his promises did happen. A partner was essentially brought into the fold and a permit was filed before year end as he promised. The only thing that didn't happen was the share price doubling or tripling in value. This has left a lot of investors befuddled. Investing in a mine is very different from buying stocks in pharmaceuticals, banking and other industries. But one thing that's definitely not different is what happens when information about an upcoming catalyst is so probable and therefore a large majority of the investors take it for fact that the stock barely jumps. The probability of the event or catalyst occurring gets baked into the share price. Look at tax reform that just was passed this week and signed by the president. A big win for corporate America but no big changes in the stock market because most of the news that would probably happen occurred more than a month ago. So investors already took that into consideration. I can name you countless numbers of stocks where say the FDA approval or expansion for a use was imminent. Then once granted, the stock barely hiccuped. The key with Northern Dynasty is knowing that huge hurdles have been overcome. We know what we've got in the ground there. That hasn't changed. And if you have any doubts, just listen to a terrific new interview that Frank Curzio conducted. 
Institutional investors have been steadily increasing their positions, and I believe the next catalyst we see will come from an unexpected SEC filing that will pop up when you least expect it. Do you actually want to miss that? I know I don't. So don't let daily share price stress you out. Buy what you can buy when it dips, and you won't have to chase later on. Even though the stock is up over 10% since its last earnings report, I believe Constellation Brands will deliver again as we run up to another earnings report on January 5th. The charts are looking beautiful here. Any entry under 221.50 up to 222 a share would be great. Finally, we have Apricus Biosciences. A lot of nice movement on the charts recently. Respectable institutional ownership numbers, low volatility relatively speaking, and increasing volume make this one a winner if you can get in between $165 and $1.72 a share. With tax selling expected this final week of the year, you should have some good opportunities to pick up a deal if you're watching close. This one has definitely been on an uptrend since early December. In part five of our You Wouldn't Believe It If You Didn't See It series, we take a look at some incredible businesses that you've probably heard of, but would be shocked to hear that they started out of a garage or essentially at a kitchen table. Since this is the final video for the year, I thought you might find this to be inspirational as well as motivational, and maybe even give that home-based business idea that you've thought about for months or even years, but never quite got past the idea or maybe even the research steps to actually give it a shot and move to the implementation phase. You never want to have regrets later on and wonder what could have been. So let's first look at Yankee Candle. This company was started in Massachusetts back in 1969 by Michael Kittredge. He melted crayons as a gift for his mom and called the first batch of candles Christmas 1969. Six years later, he opened the first Yankee Candle shop then 23 years later, he sold it for $500 million. Google just turned 21 years old and started as a research project by two college students at Stanford. Three years later, they officially incorporated. The name is a play on a math term that stands for a one followed by 100 zeros. They started the business in their dorms then upgraded to an official office, literally a garage. The rest is history. The story of Amazon started in 1995 and was only a place to sell books, but Jeff Bezos always had a vision to make Amazon a place to buy everything. Fast forward 22 years and Amazon sales account for nearly 44% of all e-commerce nationwide. Do you like baking? Ann Beeler does. Her and her husband started Auntie Ann's Pretzels back in 1988. Now they have 1,500 locations around the world. She started selling her pretzels at a Pennsylvania farmer's market and within four years had 100 locations. You might not know this, but for the first few weeks that she was in business, her pretzels tasted horrible. So the recipe definitely needed some tweaking. She sold the company 22 years later for hundreds of millions of dollars. Another business that started in Pennsylvania is Connex back in 1992. Joel Glickman was bored at a wedding and he wondered what could he do with the straws. Then he started connecting one straw to another and the rest became history. Less than a year later, he launched Nationwide. Now you can find his product alongside Legos and other educational building sets, as well as in classrooms worldwide. They sell hundreds of millions of dollars worth of product every year. Aaron Krauss was busy trying to clean his lawn furniture about six years ago, but he didn't want to scratch it up using Brillo pads. His sponges just couldn't get the job done. He used his ingenuity and experience as a car washer and invented Scrub Buddy. He convinced the right people to get him on the hit show Shark Tank, and with a $200,000 investment from Lori Grenier, he turned Scrub Buddy into a more than $50 million business and sold over 10 million units as of this year. Our final business that you can start from home profile is a handbag firm called Michi Bag Company. It was started just 12 years ago. You could sort of think of this as the Mary Kay of purses because the primary mode of marketing the product, which are purses with interchangeable bag covers, was through independent sales representatives across the country they called these Michi parties. Tens of millions of dollars worth of sales were made before the owner sold her U.S. rights to another company known as Magnolia and Vine. 
So what do all of these businesses have in common besides being something you can start small with from home? While they're solving a problem, satisfying a need, or making something in life easier, fun, or more convenient. If you have culinary skills, a creative idea even for a mobile application, technical skills to invent a product that will solve even the most mundane of problems, or a twist on something that already exists but doesn't quite do the job right, go for it and make it happen. Have a great holiday and a happy new year. And don't forget, investing in the stock market carries risk. Never invest more than you can afford to lose or not have access to for an extended period of time. If you like our videos, we appreciate your subscription to our YouTube channel. And please click the like button. We'll see you in two weeks.